Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Kyle from the TF Review, and welcome back to another edition of Megazord Monday. And on today's episode, we're taking a look at the Thunderzord Assault Team and the Red Dragon Zord, who combined formed the Thunder Megazord, the core Megazord of Season 2 of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you guys enjoy this review. Now, taking a quick look at the packaging, since I do happen to have it with me, uh, this is a large, large box, and this comprised of only the Thunder Zord Assault Team. That means it had all of the Zords except the Red Zord. Since at the time of the initial release, you did have to buy the Red Dragon Zord and the Assault Team completely separately. And of course, it has that iconic yellow font and highlights each of the Zords included in the set. On the back of the packaging, of course, it goes into more detail as to what's included exactly and with the gimmick of the four power crystals and the four miniature rangers and talks a little bit more about the Thunder Megazord as a whole. The top of the box just says, just has the logo with the four rangers represented and says Thunder Zord Assault Team, four powerful new zords. And of course, you have the iconic image of the Red Dragon Zord plus the Thunder Zord Assault Team plus the White Tiger Zord plus Tor the Shuttle Zord equals the Thunder Ultra Zord. So you buy all that, you can have this cool toy right there. So when you were a kid, you were probably bugging your parents about how bad you wanted that Thunder Ultra Zord. Just like me when I was a kid. So now that we've got everything out of the box, this is what we get. Uh, we've got the Lion Thunder Zord, the Firebird Thunder Zord, the Griffin Thunder Zord, and the Unicorn Thunder Zord, and of course, the Red Dragon Thunder Zord, the big baby right there, right in the middle. Uh, now, I mentioned earlier, this was sold separately, and when I was a kid, I actually never told my parents that, so I only got the Thunder Zord Assault Team. I never actually ended up getting the Red Dragon Zord, uh, which was kind of funny, so I had, uh, you know, I would just be creative with the, you know, with the, the Assault Team, uh, and you know what? Even then, I had an absolute blast, and I got really nostalgic when I was able to get this set again. Uh, also included is this stand where you can kind of put everything up together, and I will show that again later in the review. So heading into each Zord individually, we're going to take a look at the Thunder Zord Assault Team first, and then do the Red Dragon Zord second. Starting off with the Lion Zord itself, if you're a fan of the show, you might notice one huge difference. That the Zord is now black when in the show, and in the Japanese series, it's actually a Green Ranger Zord. Of course, uh, a lot like the early Shogun Megazord, uh, they converted the toy and made it different from the show in order to sort of align Power Rangers more than it is just a remold of a Super Sentai toy. Even though that's what it is, it's just painted differently. Uh, and apart from that, it's, it's a very basic Zord. Uh, the headpiece from the warrior mode attaches right there in the back. Uh, I always felt like it seemed a little too short. It seems I wish I wish it had like something else that just filled it out a little bit more. Uh, but apart from that, it's it's very simple. That's basically it for this. Uh, nothing on the bottom. Would have been nice if there were some wheels or something down here. Uh, but you know, it just kind of sits, and that's that's all it really does. Next up is the Firebird Thunder Zord. Now this one's a little bit wonky. Uh, it originally is supposed to come with a stand that you attach at the bottom uh, that had feet. I do have the feet, but I don't have the stand itself uh, that you kind of have to buy secondhand, probably on eBay. Uh, and in the picture on the box, uh, it shows this tail as being chrome, but for some reason it's, it's actually just a, a rubber, not very shiny, gold-painted plastic. Uh, it's simple. It doesn't really transform into anything. It doesn't have any wheels. It just... The wings just kind of flap, and they have a little bit of articulation. 
and that's basically all you'll get out of it. And then the head, much like in the show, kind of does this kind of thing. Uh, and that's basically it for the Firebird. It's pretty simple. Uh, you want to be careful with the wingtips because they do pop off pretty easy. And that's basically it. Lastly, we're going to take a look at the Griffin Sword and the Unicorn Zord at the same time because they are, for the most part, the same thing uh, with a few minor differences. That's actually, it should be like this. Um, the Unicorn Zord, it has a little tiny horn. It doesn't even look much like a unicorn. It's just a little thing right there. Uh, in the show, when it would, would kind of go like this. Um, and it rolls. <laughs> It has a ton of stickers, if you can't already tell by the side. All of this is sticker detail. The only thing on this toy that's actually painted is this little crest piece right here. And parts of the face, and that's really it. The rest of the detail is sticker, which is astounding. Uh, just how many stickers this thing had. Uh, and the Griffith Sword, which is a little bit different. You can't actually get the head to move forward. It's it's locked back here, which does which is kind of cool that it's it's not the same exact mold. Uh, but, you know, obviously it is very similar. And then a show, it would do this. Uh, and much like the other one, it rolls, and it's absolutely covered with stickers. Uh, so much sticker detail. I've never seen so much sticker detail in my life. Uh, but it's it's nicely sticker detailed, I guess you could say. Uh, and it's got a great sculpt. And that's basically it for these two Zords. Now for the big guy himself, the Red Dragon Thunder Sword. Now this toy was sold separately, as you can tell, it's quite large, uh, and it does have a full transformation all in itself. Eventually, later on, they did sell the Assault Team and the Thunder Sword when they realized people didn't know what they were doing, but for most of the time, it was completely separate. Uh, and this, of course, is much like the rest of the MMPR Swords, very iconic. Uh, it does have a bit of articulation, the legs can move, the, the hands can kind of close, uh, but they're they're it's they're on a weird joint, so they're not actually attached where you would think they're attached. They're attached right here at this little pivot, so it does kind of move in an odd, odd way, and it does that with both the front and the back. Uh, the tail itself, you do get quite a few, you get a good range of motion, even though the the back piece right here does like to flop down like that. Uh, and the head. Again, a nice range of motion. These little crest pieces can fold back. The mouth can open and close. And you can turn the head down and do all sorts of uh, nifty articulation. So there's no lack of articulation in dragon in the dragon mode. Uh, I think you get it to do what it does in the show. And that's really all that's important. Not to mention, it's got a little bit of wishability factor rating. So you want to hold it like that? You're more than welcome to. Now, I mentioned that the Red Dragon Thunder Zord does have its own kind of transformation in itself, uh, and it has its own warrior mode, which is, in essence, its own sort of Megazord by itself. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at the transformation and uh, check out the warrior mode, which I think is a really, really cool mode. Uh, so first thing you want to do is you want to take this little piece. There's a bit of parts forming with this one. Uh, and this little tail piece right here, and you can just remove the little tail piece like that close it up and then we'll we'll save that for later you also want to take the head and this is pretty gruesome just yank it off and we can put that to the side for now uh, and then we we'll close up that little feet piece and this is what we have so far we have a headless tailless corpse of a dragon to get this into the warrior mode uh, we want to make sure the feet are straight and then it folds up like that that was kind of awkward that was that was kind of cool too jeez and then I'm gonna take these hand pieces and you can just fold them up like that and then twist them around and fold them down. Do the same thing on this side. Fold them up. Fold them up and then twist them down. And then you want to take this little flap right here in the front uh, and that just folds around. And you can fold it inwards and it forms a nice little backpack. Uh, and then you also want to rotate the legs. You always want the exposed kind of front to be facing forward. So then you want to take the tail piece of the dragon sword, which you folded up. Uh, and I apologize, I'm missing one of the stickers. Uh, and this becomes a crotch garter plate. Like that. 
And then you want to take the head of the dragon and fold this up so it can form the head of the warrior mode. Uh, so you just pull it back, you open the mouth, and then there's a little slot right there. You need to slot it in like that. Just slot it in. Uh, make sure it's straight when you do it, and make sure the mouthpiece is open. Alright, and there we go, and we can put those little yellow pieces that kind of engrave into the head, and that's it. This is the warrior mode of the Red Dragon Sword, and this is the core, essentially, of the warrior mode of the Thunder Megazord, which is kind of cool. Uh, apart from our, now for articulation, he does have quite a bit for a Megazord. His arms can move up and down. Uh, if you rotate them, they can bend. Uh, the hands can open and close. Again, it's really tight, so you might want to be careful. He doesn't have any head articulation. He does have a thigh swivel, bend at the knee, and he does have some feet articulation. So, really articulated for a little Megazord guy. Uh, and he comes with this staff. And he can hold the staff, just like that. So there he is. An, an awesome little, little guy. Uh, definitely, definitely sweet. So... In the show, what would happen was they would, you know, the Red Ranger would, would form this little Megazord mode, and, and things wouldn't work as well as they were hoping. And they would call the Carrier mode, or the Battle mode, or whatever it is, the stand. Uh, and this is the stand. This is what it came with. Uh, and this right here is kind of a display base. And what you would do, and all you would need to do, is take each sword, and they would just... You can just put them on. They don't actually peg into anything. You just literally just place them on. And you take the red dragon sword. And he's got two little feet grooves. And the lion sword just fits in right there. Now I am missing this piece, but there would be on the back, there would be a little pole that would stick up. And you could get the fire bird to stand right there and kind of look into the red sword's butt. Unfortunately, I don't have that. I'm trying to get it, but I just don't have it yet. And there is the Thunderzord battle sled, for the most part. Uh, you get the idea. If you wanted to move it around, since nothing pegs into place, it would literally just collapse like that. Now, these both basically share the same leg transformation, so it's, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, you probably already know how to do it. You just want to take these back pieces, because behind the head, there's these little shin pieces. And the heads just fold and collapse and lift up like that. They don't actually peg into anything. It's sort of dependent on the ratchet. So it, this part can get loose, uh, which kind of stinks. I think the blue one has that issue a little bit. Uh, you do the same exact thing here. Yeah, the blue one, it, it's really loose. So, uh, you know, just don't, don't transform it too much. <laughs> uh, and you'll be able to tell which side is which because, because if the right side has this extended little piece right here. You know this is the right leg, and the left leg has the extended little piece right here to the left. That is the left leg, and that is the legs of the Thunder Megazord. So we're going to take these, we're going to put them away. Actually, we're going to keep them. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take the Red Dragon Zord, remove the staff out of his hand, and we're going to prep him for Thunder Zord mode. And to get him into Thunder Zord mode, uh, what we need to do so we need to take his legs, turn them to the side like that, and point the toe, like a ballerina. Point the toe. Uh, then you want to take his arms, fold them out, the same thing, and that's basically it. Uh, and we just take the red dragon sword, and it's not a very, very subtle or uh, pretty transformation, but he just goes in like that. And he wears them like a big pair of stylish boots. Next thing we need to do is take the lion sword. And this just kind of completely, completely uh, falls apart. So we can take the head off. And then we can take the feet off. Like that. And they just come apart. And these come apart like that. Um, so what we want to do, we want to take the chest piece. And it's worth noting that the chest piece actually houses... Um, all of those little miniature ranger figures that you got. I didn't showcase these off too much, but they all fit in there. Uh, and if you're not a fan of these, what I would consider doing is just super gluing them in there. Uh, because I like the way they look. You know, it looks like there's a little team of rangers, and you have no reason to really take them out. 
uh, because they get lost very easily. Uh, so what you do is you take this piece, flip the head of the lion out, and then there are two little panels on the inside that folds out, that folds out. They're a little flimsy, so do be careful. Uh, over time, they could break. And then what you do, is you just slide it onto the chest like that. And that's, that's basically it for that. Then what you want to do is you want to take each of the feet, and these become the arms. Flip them around, uh, and the arm pieces just fold out like that. Pretty easy. Do the same on both sides. Uh, and they just, you just slide them on like, like big gloves, and that's it. Do the same onto this side, slide it on like a big glove, and that is it. Um, then you want to take the headpiece right here. You want to take the headpiece, which is on the tail of the lion, and this right here just kind of, these little pegs. There you go. And there, the head is attached. Lastly, you want to take the Thunderbird, or the, the Firebird. <laughs> I keep saying Thunderbird for some reason. And you'll notice there are two little pins, two little holes. So you want to compress the head just a bit. Remove the tail, we'll use that a little bit later, uh, and fold the wings forward like this. And it's going to form essentially a belt, and like that. And now the Thunderbird is attached, flip it around. Then what we want to do is we want to fold the tips of the wings and slide them behind the lion head, just like that. And now he's wearing a big stylish belt. So we've got stylish boots and stylish belts and stylish gloves. It's just a style fest going on over here with the Thunder Megazord. And we are almost nearly done with this monster. Let me take the staff of the Red Dragon Sword and attach it with the tail of the Thunderbird. Firebird. Oh my god. Uh, and he just holds it like there. Just stick it in his hand like that. Uh, and he also comes with this sword. And this is actually a really nice sword. It's got a nice metallic blade. Uh, and it's got a nice real chrome detailed sheath. So you just take it and you clip it onto the outside of the wings of the Firebird. Like that. And that is the Thunder Megazord. Now it is a massive, massive Megazord. This is probably the biggest Megazord that we ever got. Um, and there is the Thunder Megazord. This huge, huge... A hunk of a beast of a Megazord. Uh, I think this is one of the biggest Megazords we've ever gotten. Um, it, it is quite huge, and pictures just don't do it justice. Uh, now if you want, you can take the sheath out, and he can kind of barely hold it. Uh, you just need to make sure the arms are pointed forward. He can hold the sword. Uh, barely. Not even, not even that much. And there you go. But I prefer to have it sheathed. Uh, and that's, it's, it's much like all the other uh, Megazords, it's got Megazord articulation, the arms can rotate, and that's about it. Uh, but from a detail perspective, you know, it's all there, it's very close to the show, the only major differences was that these pieces right here were gray in the show, and in the Japanese version of the toy they were also gray, but for some reason in the American version they were black. I'm not sure why, but that's just kind of the way it was. Uh, and that's really it for the Thunder Megazord. Uh, a great, great piece. The only issue that I have, and I think a lot of peop other people have this issue, which is being addressed in the, the th Legacy version, is that this toy is literally um, stickers. That's all this is, all the detail, all the great detail is all stickers. And if you were to remove all the stickers, it would just look like bare colors of plastic, and that would look horrible. So the Legacy version luckily has no stickers at all, which should help the detail quite a bit and will sort of take the focus off of the stickers and make it more on the toy itself, which I'm looking forward to. Um, but apart from that, again, this is an iconic piece of Power Rangers history. Um, you have the little window right there in the front with the little rangers, which I love. Uh, and it, that's, that's basically it. So, I really hope you guys enjoyed this review. Uh, be sure to follow me on Twitter at the TF Review. And again, be sure to join me next Monday for another look at another Megazord. I believe we'll be starting to look at the Zeo team, which I have every Megazord for. So that'll be a lot of fun. 
again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.